I'm happy that the young people have begun to look into the sound of the plunger and the sound of mutes, which was back here in history all the time. But then transportation and everything got so expensive that the big bands couldn't carry the hats and carry all the different mutes. But years ago, when I was playing with Benny Carter and Lionel Hampton, we had all the mutes and Count Basie. But then things became bad for jazz that a lot of times we used to have to only take half of our repertoire of music because of all these different things happening to us. The plunger had so many different effects that you could do. And we had a blues singer in Lionel Hampton's band, Sonny Parker. And he was one of those blues singers that would sing a few lyrics and have such a big gap in between before he said something else. And uh, one night I was feeling pretty good and seemed like there was so much gap in between that I started filling it up with the plunger. Hey, pretty baby, how you doing today? And I, before he would say something else, you see. And when the tune finished, Lionel him is that, leave it in, Gates. That's the way he spoke and that's the way he talked. And then, leave it in, Gates. And then it came a thing till I started experimenting with it. And then by the time I came into Count Basie's band to play fields for Joe Williams and everything, Basie would sort of like coach me with it then to stay out of the way of the singers. He'd say, do whatever you want to do, Al, but stay out of the way of the singers. And if you can do that, that would be really great. And so the next thing I found myself playing for Ben Crosby Fields, Fields for Sarah Vaughan, Fields for Ella Fitzgerald, Fields for so many different artists, Tony Bennett, and it goes on for a long legacy there. By Count Basie telling me, hey, stay out of the way of the singers, this really taught me a lesson really good about that. And then after coming to do film like The Color Purple, where you have to be really in with a sound like Quincy Jones demonstrated what he wanted with the plunger. And Quincy designed this sound where it just made everything really electrifying when it happened. As you know, Tricky Sam had such a development with the mute in which he wouldn't show no one because I used to be around him. He would play for you, but he wouldn't show you his mute. I had a chance to hang out with him for a week one time in Detroit, Michigan, at the Four Horsemen Club, where Duke Ellington was playing at the Paradise Theater. And the band would hang out at this Four Horsemen nightclub, private nightclub, and Tricky Sam would come in and jam after it was over. And this is when I had a chance to play with Tricky Sam and would ask him, but he would play, but he would not show you how to do it. Tricky could call Betty Roche, and that's the way Duke Ellington would bring her on. He would take his trombone, Betty Roche, with his trombone. Well, I developed some words and things because, again, I did a film one time for Quincy Jones called The Last of the Mobile Hot Shots, which was one of the first, like, X-rated movies with Lynn Belgrave and Robert Hooks and James Corbin. And Quincy had me and Twit Steelman with the harmonica to come in to give these different things. And I had various different cuss words. See, I didn't know what I was doing at first, but I really know what I'm doing now in every way. And that comes from writing this book uh, about the plunger. I didn't know what I was doing myself till I had to do research on myself to see exactly what was going on. And now I can explain it, where I can get five different sounds on one note. And that comes from development from the plunger, leaving the bell, coming all the way out from the bell. You hear all the great artists today, like Wynton Marcellus is now playing the plunger. But you had these strong players years ago, and I find out more things about the plunger still myself every day. So whoever learns to play the plunger, they have their own creative style of their own. Not from Al Gray, because this is what my book has been designed for, to teach trumpet and trombone how to get any desired sound. Although I took the stem out of the mute because it sounded like 
a mute that Tommy Dorsey would play the way it was first developed. But then I took the stem out of the mute and developed my own sound. I happened to come up with a sound of the plunger because I didn't realize and know what I was doing. Tricky Sam would say, yo, yo, and Al Gray is to wah, wah. And so the critics like Leonard Feather and Ira Gettler said that this is different. But most plunger players you will hear will sound like Tricky Sam because yo, 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 yo. See, mine is wah, wah. Do I? And so th that's the difference of the originality. And so this has been developed in so many ways. And I can get all kinds of sounds, like especially when Joe Williams would get into one of them mean blues. And get to get a growl and everything, that was another thing that Tricky Sam had. He had a growl out of the mute. Mine is from the mouth itself blowing for the growls with the flutter tongue and so that's another difference I begin to find out from my son Michael it's a lot of creativeness he's getting a different kind of thing out of it see and I see that in the studios they need these sound effects and all bands especially big bands is going to be back to mutes with Count Pacey we used to get such great sound effects with the hats and the plungers and the buckets. You have your basket of mutes today and you have them for the studio and that's it. They don't carry them no more.